Hi, welcome back to Life in the Family. We are Lynn and Carmen Furrow, and we have been talking about setting our houses in order and being connected to the Word of God, being aligned to the Word of God. And um, last episode, we alluded to, or I did, to what if we're not in order? What do we do? Because sometimes we listen to this and we go, that sounds great. That sounds great. Oh, no. Our house isn't in order. What are we going to do? Um, and we want to encourage you that in everything that we do, we're wanting to go to the word. We want to get our truth from the, the truth, the word. What do we do with that? What is the a guiding scripture that shows us what to do? How do we do what it is that we need to do? And um, something I wanted to, that the last couple episodes made me think about was repentance. Um, I know it's probably your favorite word, repentance. And we've talked about it a lot. In kids' ministry, we talk about it as part of our praying. But to get a different mindset, a way of thinking about things, when, when we see our family or some area that's out of order, we don't go into despair. We don't have to be depressed and discouraged. We need to do the word. And the word is to repent. And that doesn't mean, oh, do everything you can, grab all your strength and gather it all together and slug it out to do what's right, to do better. We talked about that before. Let's just try to do better. No, that's not the thing. It's to get empowered by God to get a different mindset so that it can change our whole inner self so that we're empowered to follow after the Lord wholeheartedly, to yield ourselves. Yeah, it's really a change of mind mm -hmm. and, and heart that, uh, you know, the action will follow later as, as God teaches us his truth. But uh, we can try to apply this in our own strength, just what you were saying, and we'll fall flat on our face. But really, if, if it's coming back and saying, Jesus, you are the Lord, uh, and that's non-negotiable, I'm going to submit to you, teach me your ways. That's repentance. When I just yes. say, Jesus, you are Lord, I'm not the king. I'm not God over my life. You're God and I'm not him. And so would you please, uh, as I acknowledge you in all of my ways, would you now lead me and teach me uh, in your truth? And normally what happens is the Lord will begin to give you, lest you be overwhelmed. Yeah. You know, uh, I used to think that sometimes when God would bring a spirit of repentance on me and and I would, he would make me aware of areas of my life that I needed to surrender, I, I would think, great, finally, I have aligned my heart and we've dealt with all that needs to be dealt with. No, he only allowed me to see a couple things at one time uh, that were things that were important that he wanted to make me aware of. But he said, no, Lynn, there's, there's 562 <laughs> other things that are going to come after this. My point is that one change in one area of your life will lead to change in all areas of your life. The areas that God deals with us on, they are key issues that could be linchpins, hinge pins mm -hmm. that lead to other breakthroughs. So God convicts you, makes you aware of those, you surrender them, and it allows there to be a domino effect of you releasing other things to him. Repentance is a gift that keeps giving. Repentance is not just for the sinner. It is for the saint. And so I encourage you to ask God, God, give me a gift of repentance, which helps me again have a change of heart and mind to align with the king and his ways. And, those, and that can be in a particular area. Um, we're not saying, you know, look at every area, all 572 thousand maybe areas of our life that we that God needs to deal with but maybe there's one area maybe it's and what and it, the Holy Spirit does that for us and he will reveal to us what is that area is it is it finances in my family is it our free time in my family is it um, we were wanting to talk about setting in devotional time in our family and I think we're going to get to that but what is out of order um, Lord, I want it to get in alignment. One thing that um, I think the first or second episode that I jotted down was um, how we get out of order is changing the divine alignment in this way. Sometimes we put children 
in the center or children at the top. And we allow our children to dictate how we're going to run our family, when we're going to do things, how we're going to do things. Because I don't want to do that. I don't feel like it. I'm too tired. I got to go do this. And we allow them to lead by default because we have let go of that. And that is something we need to repent of and reset a standard. One of the greatest things that in our family, a truth, a building block that God gave us through some material that helped shape our family. And I thank God mm -hmm. uh, for that material. It was called Growing Kids God's Way. And I know there's some controversy that has become associated with some of that content, or maybe it's application. But one of the truths that we laid a hold of that helped us, because you have these children that are born into your family, and they come into your family, and they have, they're born sinners, by the way. <laughs> They, they look innocent, but they are not. And so all of a sudden there is this manifestation of their wills, their wants, their desires. And believe me, uh, unless you recenter your home around the Lordship of Christ, they will try to assert themselves of king of your home. And, and so... I know maybe you don't have any of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a king or queen. Um, yeah, based on who's desiring to reign uh, in your home. But this truth, and I want to go ahead and state it, is that our children are welcomed into our families, but we let them know that they are not the center of attention. They are not going to be, again, the king or queen that comes to reign over our family. And so what we have to do is we have to say, you know, your needs are important to us, but also uh, your needs will be met in a legitimate and appropriate way, not based upon how much you scream, how much you demand, how much your, in your little fierce little rebellious will uh, comes to assert itself, no, you will learn to respect others. You will learn to be patient. You will learn to wait. You will learn. And, and, and what that teaching process enables us to do is to bring our kids into alignment with the authority that God has established in the home. They learn respect for that authority, and they learn uh, that respect for the others that, that are their siblings that their needs do not come before everyone else, but there is an order. There is a way in which we uh, meet needs in a, in a legitimate way. And we are in a crisis right now. And I think it's, it's because marriages have broken up and, and you know there is this sense of shame and guilt that many parents have over the consequence of, uh, of divorce, that they realize a security was taken away. And, and so we just try to, you know, make kids feel happy. And so we'll do everything to compensate for the failures of parents in a marriage relationship. But what it has done is we have fed the monster. Mm -hmm. And we have a generation of kids that are just self-centered, demanding. And, and the more we try to feed their need, uh, the more we have turned them into very selfish people but we try to, to meet their needs or even give them what they want because we feel guilty of our failure as, as parents. And what I wanted to say about that is even for parents, there is this generation because it's just that problem's gotten worse. But those parents maybe weren't equipped or didn't lean into this grace of being rooted in the word themselves to be able to ground themselves and to hold on to that truth and apply it in their life so then their children weren't rooted in the word. So it's just this compounding effect because we, um, we as parents have to be rooted in the word. Otherwise, how can we teach our children, you need to be nice to your brother or sister. Why? I mean, and they may not say it, but it's our duty it's our honor and obligation to give them, this is the reason, this is the foundation, it's, it's in the word. 
This is the why. It's not because I'm mad. It's not because I'm fed up and I've reached my limit. It has nothing to do with yeah. my emotions. It has all to do with the truth of the word of God. And this is something that we've established in the family. Our family is going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And we're going to serve it in the way we talk. And we're going to serve him, serve him in the way that we speak to one another, in the way we don't hit each other and the way we don't criticize and use our words to speak death to each the way other we in all ask of these for ways things. the way we ask for things mm -hmm. the way we interrupt our parents the in in every area and I don't want to add you know talk about all those things right now but there's there's a way there's a law we live by and it's not the law of self it's the law of love it's the law of loving others better than ourselves loving others the way that God loves That's right that's good, honey. Preach it, preach it, preach it. <laughs> but you were going to read out of the word, and we need to do that. We need yeah. to get some word in this well, other than our references. In this session, I, I want to just um, emphatically state it this way. The way we align with the king and, and, and give the king his rightful place is an honor and a respect mm -hmm. for what our king has said. Mm -hmm. It's easy, and Jesus plainly said this. Many call me Lord, and they do not do the things that I say. And so he said that the authenticity of our love for him, yeah. our love for the king, is whether we're actually going to do what he's commanded. So kings rule by decrees. Now, there are kings uh, in, in yesterday that would set a great example. They would lead their men into battle. Uh, they, they would travel over their realm and they would, they would evaluate how people are representing him. They were engaged and involved. But primarily, kings had to rule because they couldn't be in two places at one time. They had to delegate authority and they had to rule by decree. And so they would entrust a decree or an instruction to a delegated region who would then go decree it mm -hmm. and echo it and tell it over and over till finally everybody understood the desire of the king, the will of the king, the purpose of, of what the king was trying to accomplish. So Jesus, if we're, if we're wanting to say, yes, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to align to the king and his purpose and his will. Then what I have to do is I have to honor his word. So the king has his rightful place and I know that I'm in alignment with him when I put his word first. Not my opinions, not my ideas, not that I read a, a good book that is circulating in culture. No, I go back to the source that reveals the heart and the intention and the will of my king. Now, I want to read out of Deuteronomy chapter 8. And Deuteronomy is a recap after the children of Israel had come out of Egypt, they had walked through the wilderness, and there is the summary of all that they've gone through, but Moses explains to them why they went through what they went through. And so in this passage of Scripture, I just want to paraphrase some of the verses that precede what I'm going to read, uh, but clearly... Moses tells the children of Israel, this new generation that was getting ready to go in, he said, really, the wilderness, because the wilderness was a way that wasn't the fastest route to the promised land. But God wanted to get Egypt out of them. He didn't want them to recreate a new Egypt in the promised land. He wanted to get the thinking of Egypt, the ways of Egypt, the idolatry of Egypt out of them. He was going to reclaim them as a unique people that were that was holy that were holy unto him and so he said uh, that in the wilderness he humbled them he tested them he wanted to see where their heart was in relationship to his commandments to them hmm. he wanted to see if their heart was a true heart a good heart that would respect and honor what he said or when the going got tough, would they jettison all that God said and they would adopt their own ways 
And so he said, I, I humbled you. I tested you. I wanted to see what was in your heart. And then he said, in this humbling process, it said God permitted them to experience hunger, but the hunger was satisfied by a manna that was produced by a miracle, and the miracle manifest because of something God was daily doing. Where do we think the manna came from? It came from the mouth of the Lord himself. He spoke that bread into existence. Just as Jesus did a, a redux of what God did for the children of Israel in the Old Testament, it said that he broke the bread and he blessed it. The few loaves were multiplied, were created by the blessing that came out of the mouth of Jesus. They didn't have little bread extenders and they, they were not <laughs> trying to malt it. No, when he blessed it, there was the miracle of the, 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 it was a creative miracle, the miracle of multiplication. God daily spoke his provision of heavenly bread to his people. And Moses said this, if you didn't get where the manna came from, if you didn't understand that it was a product mm -hmm. of the word of God, the result of God speaking to them daily. And I hope that we can see God speaks to us daily. <laughs> he, he reveals his truth to us daily. And that daily word, that daily voice of God over us, manifesting over us, we must live by it. We must live in it and in the truth of it. And so he said this, and he humbled you and let you hunger, but that he, he met the need of the hunger that he allowed you to experience, to feed you with something that wasn't natural, but was a product of the manifestation of the spoken word, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. In other words, no one had ever experienced the miracle of manna the product of the voice and the, and the word of God, that he would make you know or understand that man does not live by natural bread or by the strength of him being able to produce the right amount of stuff to feed uh, your family. He said, we live by what? Man does not live by bread alone, but lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Our families can only be sustained, yeah. provided for, protected. Uh, our families can only be established and strengthened unless the Lord builds the house. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're laboring in vain. It's purposeless for us to try to raise a family in the 21st century in this day in our own strength. Mm -hmm. The only way that our home, our household is going to be strengthened and established is if we're living by the word of God. And he promises to be faithful. He is with us daily. Daily we can hear from the Lord. And that might surprise you or it might make you think, oh my goodness, there's been so many days I don't even know that I heard from the Lord. Well, you maybe did and didn't realize it, or maybe you didn't have your ears open to be able to be a listener and hear that. Um, but he's given you the ability in being reborn to life, to hear his word every day, to hear him speak to you every day. And it might to be- To have him reveal his word to us. Mm -hmm. And it is life to you, and it is life to your family. And that's how Jesus withstood temptation when he was in the wilderness. He said, man doesn't live by bread alone. So it, it empowers us, it equips us to do the work that he's calling us to do. I apologize, I started preaching. He was so excited, it was <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Well, we love you guys, and I'm going to have Carmen pray us out on this episode. All right. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, that um, we can connect with your heart through your word, and your word sustains us. Your, your word sustains us every day, and your word anchors us. God, it teaches us how we should respond to you. It gives us strength to respond to you. Lord, we thank you for your grace in your word, your empowerment to follow after you, to be yours. Thank you for your name over us. And Lord, we pray 
God, as we yield our hearts to you, that your word would become uh, more and more important in our lives, that we would place it and value it the way that you value it. You said that your words are life, that not one bit, not even one word would fall to the ground and come to nothing, but every word would do what you sent it to do. God, let us value your word the way that you value your word, and let us value you and love you the way you ought to be loved, the way you should be loved. Thank you for empowering us to follow after you and to learn you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.